of uh, the webinar tonight. All right, all right, Natisha, so good to have you. So good to have you. Glad you like that background there. Anyone else who's on, just go ahead and kind of sound off in the uh, chat window. Let me know you're there. I'd like to kind of customize the uh, webinar for you or your situation, okay? We're going to be talking about how to start your own successful small business tonight. Oh, great. So great to have you, uh, Pastor Marshall. So great, so great, so great to have you. I know some of you are starting ministries. We're going to be looking specifically at a profit-making enterprise tonight, but some of what we're talking about is also applicable. Hi, Willie. How are you doing? Some of this is applicable also to nonprofits as well. All right. So it is 7 o'clock. I do want to make good use of your time. Hi, Tracy. Glad that you could be here. Great, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful one. Donna, so good to have you. Thank you for sounding off, everyone. I pray that you get a lot out of what we have uh, to uh, present tonight. Do me a favor. Would you let me know whether you've already started your business legally or not, or you want to start a business legally? Hi, Vonda, so good to have you, and I'm glad that you're excited. As you can tell, I'm excited as well. So, uh, now that you're on, would you let me know of uh, the status of your business enterprise? I'm assuming all of you are interested in starting some sort of business enterprise. Some of you may have already started. Want some more information? Some of you may want to. And if you just want to, wow, that's a great place to be. Now, Tisha, see, you've already started Thrive Studios. It's legal. Would you let me know if that's a nonprofit or for-profit? Somebody needs to resurrect an old, awesome, great, 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 wonderful, have not started, great, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, great. Most of what I'm going to be sharing tonight is going to be general information, and I'll preface that before we start tonight, and hopefully you can take what we're sharing tonight and apply it to your specific business. Every business is a little bit different. That's why there are different enterprises, different industries. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but I'm offering general information tonight that could be helpful to you, and hopefully you'll grab some tips here and there and say, yeah, I want to implement that. Yes, I didn't know about that. Yes, let's implement this, okay? All right, so with that in mind, thanks so much. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Father God, I'm so thankful that so many people are on tonight, and they want to learn more. Father, I've already prayed for this webinar, and I pray that this seed that I'm sharing tonight will lodge in a big way in the soil of their heart. And Father, may they take right steps now to blossom, to come to fruition, that which they are dreaming of, having to come through to fruition. We believe that we'll receive this now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and start the PowerPoint. And as we go along, if you have questions, put them in the chat window. Again, this is one way uh, communication, this is a webinar format, okay, one way, but you can chat uh, through the chat window. So do bring up the chat window, whether you're on a phone or whether you're on a PC or Mac or tablet, bring up the chat window, write your comments and questions, and periodically I'll go over there and I'll take a moment and read whatever questions or comments you have, and we'll address those at that time. Okay, so let's get the PowerPoint going here, and we will get started. All right, this will take uh, about an hour uh, to go through, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so this is week one. Week one of a webinar that I'm doing over two weeks. Okay, so I'm doing this over two weeks. Tonight, we'll be looking at why you should start uh, your small business. Next, we will look at actually starting it, the actual steps that you take to start your business legally from a federal standpoint and from a state standpoint. We'll also be looking at the different types of entities that you may want to form your business in on next week. Tonight, we're going to start some introductory information to prepare you for that, but you need this background before you start the business. You want to start it correctly or as much as possible. Can you change it over time? Yes, you can but you might as well have a good background before you start it so you can start it the best that you can. All right, so 
I will provide, in fact, I've already provided notes for tonight, and you can get those from our website, darylljordan.com slash start one. This is week one of the Start Your Own Successful Small Business webinar, okay? If you have individual questions, uh, you can email them to me at ministry at darylljordan.com. Okay. Before I begin tonight, I must start with a disclaimer. All right? This webinar is presented solely for educational purposes. All right? It's designed to provide helpful information on the subjects discussed. This is not legal advice. This is not accounting advice. This is not professional services advice because every company is different and the advice and strategies contained herein may not be suitable for your situation. Therefore, you should seek the services of a competent professional for your specific situation. Okay? I can even provide specific guidance for you, not in a teaching format like this, but on a one-on-one -on -one, because every business is different. While best efforts have been used in preparing this workshop, the presenter makes no representations or warranties of any kind. As I assume no liabilities of any kind. If you go out and make some choices, okay, you can't come out and say, Daryl Jordan told me to do it this way. I'm not going to be liable. So this is rule number one. Daryl Jordan is not liable for what you do. This is for educational purposes. Okay, so you, you go on and laugh with me as well, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to say any liabilities for the choices you make. All right, I'm giving you education that will help you make right choices. Now, if you want specifics for your situations, contact me, and I can, I can help you with that. Okay. All right, that's in disclaimer number one. You can read that in detail when you download the notes. Here's rule number two, okay? Sometimes I get so excited about starting a small business, it may seem like I'm disparaging a profession and I'm not doing that, okay? I am not telling anybody to go out and quit their job, okay? This is rule number two. Rule number two, go, don't go out and quit your job. And I'm not disparaging a profession that you're already in. I'm not doing that. Now, when your enterprise gets so large and so successful that it can supplant your day job, go ahead and make the transition. Okay, so it's rule number two. Two disclaimers. Rule number one, okay, this is education. This is not advice. Number two, because advice, I need to look at your specific situation. And if you want me to look at your specific situation, you have to contact me. Individual. Okay, rule number two. Sometimes I get excited, okay? So I'm not disparaging at any time during this webinar a profession, okay? I'm definitely saying don't go out and quit your day job and <laughs> start your full time business. All right, okay. So here's the agenda tonight. We're going to start with an introduction. Then we're going to talk about EDL and PPP. Don't worry about if you don't know what the uh, acronym stands for. We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about what an entrepreneur is, and we're going to talk about those things that make a successful business. We're also going to talk about those things that cause a business to fail. Many people jump out into a business, and they really don't consider everything. They're so excited to jump out there. There are a number of things you do need to consider to be successful. I want to talk about those tonight. Okay, who is this guy, Daryl Jordan? Why is he teaching this webinar? Well, because I'm an entrepreneur myself. I've been an entrepreneur since I took newspapers as a teenager. I look back over my life, I've always, almost always had a small business running, even when I was a professional. I'm currently running Prosperity One LLC, which is my full-time business. I do business as home by LLC, so I'm an entrepreneur myself. I'm a former director of IT, that's what my uh, background is in uh, my graduate work and postgraduate work has all been in information technology. So half of my career has been over on the corporate side, half has been on the business side. I've been full-time business working for myself. Half of my career, other half career has been on the corporate side. Even when I had a corporate job for those 20 years or so, I always, always kept at least one small business on the side, and I will tell you why tonight that you should consider doing that. Even in your day job, you should have at least one small uh, a business. Oh, by the way, all the men, all the fathers on the, on the call tonight, happy Father's Day in advance. I won't be able to see you on Sunday. We may not see you on Sunday. So happy Father's Day in advance. You know, we live in the most 
blessed nation in the entire world. And our government actually supports small enterprise. In fact, our tax laws are geared towards enterprise and business development. Why? Because our government wants to see more and more business. I'll tell you why a little bit later on. So it's a wonderful thing if you want to stop out, uh, uh, jump out into a business. We're all encouraged by our parents to go to school, go to college, get a good education, and get a job. Go back to rule number two. <laughs> get a good job. I also want you to consider, right, the passions on the inside of you. Many of us, we want to live out our passion in our profession. Sometimes we don't. Many people go to school get out of profession, and they're only using part of their, their education. So I'm not using that education at all in your own small business. Hopefully you can take that passion and live that passion out through your own small business. So hopefully you will, you will take advantage of that. Okay, I'm also a pastor. I pastor the Life Church uh, International. We are online. So if you can go to lifechurch.org, you can catch us on any Sunday morning. We have four worship services going on Sunday morning, and we also – I'll re-airing those throughout the whole weekend. So if you don't have a church, not give the word, check us out at lifechurch.org. I'm also a speaker. I'm actually speaking to the Financial Empowerment 2020 conference in Richmond on next month. I'm so excited about getting into that. Uh, I'm a marketplace minister, <laughs> which is why I'm teaching this course here to kind of encourage you to consider jumping out into your own small business. I'm also an author. I've written two books now, and this webinar is based on one of those books tonight. I'm also married to Kathleen Joy. I've been married to her for a wonderful 42 years, and I have six grown children. Grown children. My two oldest children have children of their own. So I've been doing this for a little while. And oh, by the way, two of my children, I helped them start their small business earlier this year. The reason why I wrote the book on how to start your own successful star business, the reason why I'm doing this webinar is because while pastor and I found that there were people in my church who wanted to start a business and didn't know how. Like I said, I've done this for years and years and years. So I gave a, a seminar in the church on how to start your own business, and the book was a development out of that. You get to benefit from this tonight. Okay? All right. So let me start with some questions for you. I'll tell you about me. Let me start with some questions for you. How would you like to make an extra two thousand dollars without doing anything different? Everybody should be saying yes. <laughs> There's no catch. No catch to that. I'll show you later on tonight how you can make an extra two thousand dollars without changing anything. Without doing anything that you're not doing doing now. Okay. How would you like to make an extra two thousand dollars? Every hand should be raised on that. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, let me ask you another question. Did you get your $2,000 from Edel? Okay, I'll explain what Edel is in just a moment, but did you get your $2,000 of free money? Okay, you still may be able to do it, okay? That's worth the price of admission tonight, okay? So just listening to this webinar tonight, I'm putting money in your pocket. Did you get your $15,000 from PPP? The Paycheck Protection Program, did you get your $15,000? If, if you had established your business by February the 15th and you had payroll, our government could have sent you a check. Better yet, they would have put it straight in your business account. You still may be able to do it. If you had established your small business by February the 15th and you had payroll expenses, the government would have put money in your bank account. All you had to do was apply for it. We're going to talk about that briefly tonight because you still, you still might be able to benefit from that. Let me ask you a question. Are you living out your dream? Now's the time to do it. This is, this is 2020. It's a brand new year. Yes, COVID has been upon us, but listen, COVID can't stop a business owner. <laughs> All right. Are you living out your dream? Many people should be living out their dream. I taught a webinar early in the year about knowing the will of God. Being in the center of the container of God's will is the best place to be. That's the place of blessing, and that's the place where he has placed some passions on the inside of you to help other people. And you can do that from a commercial standpoint. Yes, you can do that from a nonprofit standpoint and from a for-profit standpoint. Are you living out your dream? Are you fully satisfied at your job? Rule number two, I'm not disparaging are you fully 
living out your dream through your job, through your profession. If not, you can through your small business enterprise. Okay? Are you living out all of your gifts and talents? The Bible says your gift will make room for you. It will open up doors for you and bring you before important people. That's what the Bible says. So are you living out your gifts and the talents? Are you living out the hope of your calling? You can't do that, either from a nonprofit or a for-profit perspective. Tonight, I'm going to show you how to do that from a for-profit perspective. Okay, so I've been using these acronyms, EDL. EDL stands for Economic Injury Disaster Loan. This was something that the SBA had already established before COVID-19. And through the CARES Act, there was a piece of legislation about $2 trillion worth that our government put together in order to help individuals and businesses. Okay, if you're an individual and made less than $100,000, the government put paychecks in your personal bank account. If you had established your business prior to two, uh, February 15, 2015, and you acknowledge, of course you had to apply for this, if you acknowledge to the SBA through your business bank account, through your business a banker, if you had acknowledged that you had a business and your business was impacted by COVID, who wasn't impacted by COVID? Customers had to stay home. They couldn't come out. <laughs> Anybody could easily claim my business is affected by COVID. The government put money in your bank account. This was a loan advance that will provide up to $10,000 of economic relief to businesses. Come on. That's including a small business that are currently experiencing temporary difficulties. The government was printing money, printing money, and put it into your bank account if you had a business established on February 15th. Then they changed the rules. First, the rule was, because they wanted to get this money out so fast, they, they just quickly put this legislation together, and they, they just started printing checks. Okay, they put it in your bank account directly. First, they said $10,000 for every business. They said, no, 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 we got this wrong. They said up to $10,000. They, they gave every small business that was illegally established by February the 15th, who applied for this, $1,000 per employee up to $10,000. So even if you had a small business where you and your spouse were in the business, they sent you $2,000, no questions asked. No questions asked. Who would like to have gotten that? Let me ask you this, but who got their $2,000 of EDL money this year? See, this was a loan advance that does not have to be repaid. It started off as a loan program, but it turned into be a grant. A grant is free money given to you that you do not have to pay back. If you had a small business established earlier this year, you could have gotten up to $10,000 from the EDL money. And you didn't have to be approved for it. You didn't have to be qualified for it. They didn't look into your credit. All you had to do was say, I have a legal small business. Alone, you're going to have to establish your business legally and apply for this. But well, listen, who would like to get some free money? That you funds. Get your business established and apply for it. It's free money. I tell you what, that's the price of admission to the webinar right there. All right. Let's talk about PPP. All right. Before I go on, are there any quick questions? Any quick questions regarding that? Okay. You're losing my sound. Oh, no. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Now she says she's got it back. Does somebody sound off and let me know that you can hear me okay? And am I going too fast? Maybe I need to slow down. 
I would like to ask a question. Now, Tisha, go ahead and ask your question. Good. Yes, I can hear now. Great. We can now go back to the last slide. Yep, let's see. I will definitely go back to the last slide. Let's see if we can do that. That is uh, this one here. This one about June 15th. Okay, the SBA will begin accepting new EDL applications on June 15th to qualify. Small. Qualify just means your legal business. That's it. It doesn't mean you have a certain number of employees. You have one employee. You are a small business with one employee yourself. You are a qualified business if you have $10 in your business bank account. And when you establish your business legally, you should establish a separate bank account and keep the money separate. We'll talk about that tonight. Okay, great. All right, great. Nice teacher. Great. Uh, you can hear me now. Great. Fantastic. We'll say with that in mind, why don't we keep going here then? All right, so everybody's going to get their their EDL money. All right, so let's talk about this other COVID-19 relief program for small businesses because I'm telling you, our government favors business, and there are more small businesses in the U.S. than large businesses. So this program benefits primarily small businesses. Yes, we found some larger business guy. Uh, got involved in the Paycheck Protection Program, they got spanked for it and had to give their money back, but this is a program for small businesses, and small can be small. Small can be one employee with $10 in your business bank account legally established, okay? Again, PPP is the CARES Act, or probably CARES Act, is an SBA loan that helps businesses keep their workforce during COVID-19. Why? Because the government wants us to bounce back. First of all, the government says stay at home. Let's stay healthy, okay? Let's not spread COVID-19. We've done that. Now we're opening up again. And the government had already designed for businesses to keep their employees or to re-employ them. And this Paycheck Protection Program, if you had a small business established by February 15th, now you can... You have to go to SB website. You still may be able to get into this now. But when they originally came out with the program, as long as you had a business established by February the 15th and you had payroll. Now, I'm saying some small business may take a while to get up to payroll. Even if you had payroll for one employee or two employees, it could bring yourself and your spouse. Under the Paycheck Protection Program, you could have applied for this. In fact, way back then, they were even allowing contractors and vendors in there to apply for that as well. And they eventually changed that. But this is an SBA loan that helps businesses keep their workforce. The government wants your businesses to prosper. This loan will not have to be repaid if, see, it's a big if, the EDL was completely granted money. No qualification to receive the money. You will not have to ever pay it back. The PPP begins as a loan. However, it does not have to be repaid if, okay, when you apply for this, you said we have payroll and we're going to use this money for payroll. In fact, they were giving you about two, two and a half months of payroll. Who would like to have two and a half months of payroll? I do. That's why I apply for PPP. And it said this loan does not have to be repaid as long as at least 60% of the money they gave you. I said gave you does not show you how to make this no longer a loan but a grant, if you use at least 60% of that for payroll purposes, you do not have to pay this back, which means PPP can very easily become also a grant. And this was available only, only for small businesses. Isn't that awesome? You and I need to have a, a small business. Now, this money could be used for payroll costs, interest on your mortgage, rent, and utilities, those are things that they had designed this to be useful. But guess what? I sure would like to have free money, and I sure got my free money. And no credit qualifications to get this. I'm telling you, you need to go to sba.gov. Perhaps, perhaps you can still get your PPP if you're not. Why don't you answer this question tonight? Did anybody get PPP money? 
did anybody on the call, if you had already started your business, get, get any PP money, would you let me know that? No credit qualifications. You didn't have to get approved and all this. All you had to do was apply for it and say, we have payroll, this amount, these other expenses, apply for it. Uh, through your bank, I heard of some people uh, apply for it directly through the SBA, the correct route. The correct route should have been through your bank, apply through your business bank to get this uh, SBA loan slash grant. And then over time, when they approve it, they will literally, literally put money in your business bank account, okay? Even, even if you receive this as a loan, okay, it will be repaid in 1% interest rate. And now if you got it, it would, would not have to be repaid before five years. That's still a good deal. Again, our government is trying to help, trying to help small businesses. The big deal here is that this does not have to be a loan, but becomes a grant. A grant is free money given to you with no strings attached. You do not have to pay back. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on. All right, so so far we have jumped into the deep end of the pool. We're talking about EDL. We're talking about PPP. Let's take a step back. Let's wade in the water for a little while. But let's take a step back because I want to build upon this to the point where next week when we start establishing your business, legally establishing your business, you know why. You have the fundamentals. So let's talk about the fundamentals. An entrepreneur. What is an entrepreneur? Okay, An entrepreneur is a person who organizes, starts, and then manages a business. An entrepreneur. The thing about an entrepreneur is this person is willing to accept and take considerable initiative and risk. If you're not a risk taker, you probably you probably should keep your day job. Go back to rule number two. <laughs> I am not starting a profession. But you know, we all get a profession because it's safe. You get a paycheck every week from somebody else. Aha. Uh -huh. But they're also taking all of your gifts and talents for that paycheck when you could be using that for yourself for greater return. Ah, that's why you should, should consider starting an enterprise on the side and when it grows up so big and it can supplant your day job, go ahead and make the transition over. Okay, so an entrepreneur is someone who has initiative. They're willing to start some things. They're not depending on everybody else. An entrepreneur is willing to start. So tonight, I want you to consider, is this me? Do I have the traits to be able to start a successful small business? And I tell you what, you learn these traits over time. You learn the skills over time. But before you jump out into it, I want you to be aware of what is required to become successful, okay? So are you an entrepreneur? Are you able to take initiative, and are you willing to accept some amount of risk, okay? Well, it all starts with a dream. We all have a dream to do something, don't we? We all have a dream. Oh, man, I really want to do this. Wow, I really want to spend my day doing that. You know, if you could just sit back and dream and wonder, and think about what you would really like to do every day. If you could wake up in the morning and do that, what would that be? <laughs> the difference between having a dream like that and a business is in the steps that's required to make that reality. And some people, there's a big disconnect there. You have the dream, but how do I get there to establishing this dream until it's something we can see? Those are the steps that are taken to make it reality. I'm going to go through those steps. All right, so what is a business? We've talked about an entrepreneur, the person. What is a business? Well, a business is an enterprise engaged in some sort of commerce, either with a product or a service, some sort of manufacturing of a product or providing some sort of service in commerce. Again, we're talking about profit-making businesses tonight. Okay, it is a profit-seeking enterprise, okay? And it is a separate entity from you. Boy, that's a big one right there. 
this was a great idea when someone came up with having a business which is a separate entity from you. It is an idea. It is a thing. You can't touch it, but it exists. It is legal on paper, and it is a separate, almost like a person that is not yourself, is different from yourself, but you own it. Now, why is that important? Okay, this is your time to respond. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to look at the chat window. Let's see. Let me go look at the chat window. This is your time to respond. Why is it important to have a business that's a separate enterprise from yourself, anybody? Okay. Anybody else? Hopefully you're typing. Okay. Ah, that's great, Jeff. Wonderful. Asset protection. Wonderful. Ah, Tracy, you hit the nail on the head for those two benefits. Asset protection and liability protection. And the rest of you are probably saying, well, why is that important? Let me tell you why that's important. That's a big deal. Big, big, big deal. Big deal. You want to have that separate enterprise that's separate from yourself. Let's get this going again. Because it protects you personally from any liability the enterprise may incur. Uh, that's one. The other is asset protection. Even if your business owes something and can't pay it back, then the creditors are coming after the business. They're coming after the assets, the business, and it protects your personal assets. You want to keep a clear wall of delineation between your business and yourself. A lot of people start a business from their own personal bank account. Or they have a business uh, bank account and they start co-mingling the funds. Not good. That's really not good because in a court of law, if the creditors or if other lawyers who wants to sue you on behalf of their client, if they can prove that there is no delineation between your separate entity and yourself, they can now go, let's say you have a product or service you're providing out of your home. You invite the client into your home. They slip and fall. They came to your house for the business purpose. Therefore, you've got a separate business. If they're going to sue you, they're going to sue the business. <clears throat> if they come out the assets, they come out the assets of the business. And <clears throat> if you're somewhat smart in setting up your business, you want to make sure there's not a lot of assets they can get, right? <laughs> and that wall of protection is there so they can't come over and take your house. That's serious business. I'm running an enterprise. I don't want someone else to take my home or assets that my family is depending upon. So you've got to. You must. I can't stress that enough. You must set up a separate entity for your business. Okay? Let's go on. Advantages of starting a business. Income and wealth of protection. Number one, tax benefits. Number two, I'm going to go through these in detail. Number three, liability and asset protection. I just talked about that. All right, so let's talk about income and wealth uh, creation. Let's talk about the million. Manager or their doctor or their lawyer, again, skilled professionals, they got a day job. They earn the money because they have a skill and they work for a company and receive a paycheck. 23% of the millionaires are there through paid work. The vast majority of millionaires are millionaires through a business. In fact, a business that they own. In fact, 47% of millionaires are business owners, and that's what you want to be. That's why you are on the call tonight, because you know it's, not, it's something about being a business owner, okay? Most millionaires are business owners. Another 14% comes from stars, people who can sing, people who make records, uh, people who are in sports, celebrities. Now, see, you, you look at the news, 
You look at TV and you think the vast majority of millionaires are stars. They are not. They're business, they're, a lot of them are small business owners you never heard of. There's a millionaire next door. You have no idea what they're doing, but they've established. They've established themselves a small business, and they're creating wealth, and they're maintaining their wealth. I, I'll show you in just a moment how they're doing it, and you can do the same. Okay? Taxation, another big benefit. The major advantage is through income and wealth creation. Second major advantage of owning a business is through taxation. This is powerful. This is even powerful when you've got a professional job. Now, I said half of my career has been uh, as a professional, uh, as an IT director. Okay, half of my career has been on that side of the corporate world. The other half of my career has been through a, a small business full time. Uh, most of that was in uh, selling and servicing high end IT equipment, both products and services. Okay? However, even when I had a professional job working for someone else, I still always. Always maintain a small business on the side, at least one small business on the side. Why? For the tax benefits. When you're making a high salary, you've got to shield that salary from taxation. One of the best ways to maintain most of your high income is through a business. There are other ways to do it. Charitable giving. Okay? Through a business is another one. Interest on your home mortgage, assuming you still have a mortgage. Okay, so let's talk about the advantage of taxation. There are legitimate tax deductions that you can take through a business that you cannot take personally, which means you can keep more of your money in your pocket if you have a small business. I'll show you an example here in just a moment. Here's some examples of some deductions, okay? Are you ready? Here are some examples of some small business deductions you can take that you cannot take personally. So if you don't have a small business set up, you can't take these deductions. Right? Number one, how about business meetings? Business meetings, what's so important about business meetings? Business meetings in exotic locations. I love this. The IRS will allow you to have annual business meetings. You can also have quarterly business meetings. There's nothing wrong with going off somewhere. Uh, taking your key staff with you and strategizing how can we make our business better. Let's look at how we did last year, how we're going to improve next year. Uh, you need you, When you go away, you can get a fresh mind, fresh thinking, fresh ideas. The IRS supports that. So why can't I have a business meeting in Clearwater Beach, Florida? Or can I have a business meeting in, uh, uh, in Hawaii? Can I have a business meeting in Paris? Please go back to rule number one. <laughs> talk to your accountant. Talk to your lawyer so they can tell you the proper way of doing some of these things so that you can take advantage of them. This is training. This is not Daryl Jordan telling you to have your business meetings in Paris. <laughs> There are certain ways you can do some of these things and take advantage of all this, uh, but everybody's situation is different. What I'm telling you is there is the opportunity to take a business meeting, and if your spouse is an officer in your company, wouldn't it be great? Let's go on to the next one. Wouldn't it be great if your spouse's deduction while you're in Paris, while you're in Hawaii, or Clear Water Beach, Florida, wouldn't it be great if your spouse's expenses while at the business meeting location, what if they also were deductible? <laughs> every vacation, every anniversary you take personally cannot be deducted on your taxes, but business meetings can. I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> Wonderful examples of business deductions. How about some additional benefits like health benefits? Even when I worked in a corporate world, I had health insurance, but still with health insurance, there were some, I would 
pocket money, co-pays or paying for insurance, I had to pay myself. Well, you know what? I had my small business part-time at that time while working for a full-time job offer benefits to his employees uh, of health care. And so my business uh, picked up all the expenses uh, that my other plan didn't carry. Therefore, that became a legitimate business deduction for me, which helped me to reduce my tax. Are you seeing the benefit? Even if you're not full-time in the business, even if you got a day, full-time day job, you still need it. I believe every American, every American, every American should have at least one small business. Okay? All right. Uh, business use of home. If you have a small business in your home, it would be advisable. I can't advise you. Let me change that word. You may consider having an office in your home. And if your spouse is also part of the business, your spouse may even have a part of the home or a room, which is also an, an office for him or her. Or you may want to have a room for storage of your products or marketing material, and therefore a portion of your home could be used as a business uh, use from a tax standpoint. Again, additional deductions that you personally cannot take. Now, on your mortgage, Mortgage interest is still tax deductible from a personal standpoint, but rent is never. So even if you're renting a portion of your home, you can set aside a portion of your rent as a business use of home. How about utilities? Absolutely. If, you, if you're using a business use of your home, the utilities for that portion of the home are now tax deductible. You're talking about gas, electric, water. So you add up all this. Let's say you're having customers at your home or clients, period, come to your home to discuss your business. Well, you want them to come to a place that looks very attractive, but now a portion of your lawn care can. Go back to rule number one. Talk to your accountant. This is training. <laughs> I'm letting you know what the possibilities are. A portion of your lawn care could become tax deductible. Are you getting the idea? How about cell phone, computers? I'm sure if you have a business, you should be using a computer in your business. The expenses associated with that PC or Mac, right, or Internet or cable program, you know, if you need CNBC to, to see what's going on uh, in the economy or with the stock market and that's important to your business, well, now cable uh, can now become a legitimate business expense because that's required for your business. And if I need to uh, look at CNBC or uh, Fox Business News, then I also need a TV to show that on. So now a portion of your expenses associated with the TV can now become a legitimate business expense. Uh, how about your car, automobile? Uh, that portion of your automobile you use for your business now becomes a tax deduction. In our own personal uh, ex experience, we have two cars. We use one for personal use, and the other is used completely for business use. In fact, I have a license tag on my business automobile that directs customers to our website. Therefore, my car, every mile that's used of my car is used for advertising my business. Now, every expense associated with that particularly luxury car is now tax deductible. Just some ideas here. Okay? All right, here's an example. Let's say your household income is $100,000. Let's use some round numbers here to see the example. You're with me so far? Let me go back to the chat window and make sure everything's okay. Any questions here? Lost sound and connection? Oh, no. How are things going here? Are you still with me? Can't hear the. Oh, no. Can you hear me now? Uh, somebody let me know if you can hear me okay. Sorry about that. Was somebody chat? Okay, loud and clear. Great. Okay. Oh, great. We're okay again. Great. Okay, let's go back to the example here. All right, so let's go back to the example. Okay, here's an example of taxation. This is assuming you have a full-time professional job. 
with no side small business. Let's assume the household income is $100,000, round up the numbers. Let's say we, you're in the 25% tax bracket. Therefore, your taxes that you owe for that year is $25,000, no business income. Let's say you're married with children. This example was uh, for the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Okay, so let's say your exemption for, for, uh, for being married with children is 15 8 so you can deduct that. Let's say you have some charitable deductions of $11,000, you can deduct that. Let's say you have a mortgage on your house of $35,000, you can deduct that. Therefore, your adjusted gross income for that year is $38,200. See, that's a big drop from $100,000 to $38,000. Now you're in a lower tax bracket, 15% tax bracket, and your effective income tax is now $5,730. You with me so far? Your taxes for that year is $5,730. You have this so far? Okay. So let's find out how much you would need to owe in taxes if you had a small business on the side. Okay. Let's say I had a business here. Let's say I'm selling Tupperware. I'm not very good at selling Tupperware, but I did sell one tub of Tupperware. I have a legitimate business. I actually sold something this year, but yeah, I have a lot of expenses. Well, I've got automobile expenses. I've got a market in. I've got to have a website. And, you know, I need a computer, and I need a cell phone to talk to my customers. I have a lot of expenses. So I still have the same income, $100,000, okay? Uh, yet my business income is actually in the red, $20,000. This is actually a, a case when you first start your business where being in the red is actually a good thing. It's a good thing. And see, uh, the business here has been set up as an LLC, so the business's income or loss, right, goes through your personal tax return. If you're set up as a corporation, it wouldn't work this way. If you're set up as a, as a subchapter S, it could work this way. Okay. But let's assume we've got an LLC, and we'll talk about that on next week. Uh, the different entities there and why you may consider uh, forming an LLC versus a corporation versus subchapter S versus partnership. We'll take care of that next week. Let's say you operate at a loss on paper. You're not living any differently. Okay? But on paper, there's some additional deductions you can take under the business. It caused your business to look like it's in a loss on paper. Okay. So that means you can deduct this $20,000 from your adjusted gross income, and now your adjusted gross income goes down to eighteen two. Ah, that's a good thing. That means now I'm in a lower tax bracket. I'm in a 10 percent tax bracket, and my effective tax is now only $1,800. I said at the beginning of this, how would you like to make an extra $2,000 without doing anything different? That's where $2,000 came from. Actually, I gave you three, four, four thousand dollars I should like to make an extra $4,000 this year by doing virtually nothing different except establishing your business. Now, I'm not proposing that you set up a business just for the tax return. What I'm saying is you know, your, your tax benefit. What I'm saying is when you do establish your business to pursue your dream, and even if your dream has it taken off in the first, second, or third year, and you operate at a loss, it's actually a personal benefit to you. Here's an additional refund you get just to your business of about $4,000. Good deal? Okay? I just put $4,000 in, in your pocket. How's that? All right, so taxation is a major benefit. You might be saying, why, why would the IRS do this? First of all, let me say that the IRS does allow you to do this. And the next question is, why? Why would the IRS allow me to do this? It's because they know you're going to be successful. Many businesses or some businesses will be wildly successful over time and produce additional tax revenue. Even if your business doesn't produce tax income, the employee you hire will because every employee that you hire, when you get bigger, they're going to pay income taxes, and they're going to pay 
payroll taxes, even if your company doesn't take pay taxes. Back in 2018, Amazon paid no taxes, zero taxes, even though Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world, his company pays no taxes. There was one year that the government paid him rebate money, so he actually earned money. And if Amazon can benefit from this tax benefit, shouldn't you also absolutely? Absolutely. The next major benefit, and we've talked about this, is liability protection. All right? Liability protection. All right. You want this business to be separate from you because if someone sues, they sue the business, not you. You want to keep that clear delineation between the two. So a pro properly structured business can protect itself. And that's what we'll be looking at next week, how to protect yourself by legally establishing your business. Now, the question is, do you have what it takes? Because we've talked about, you know, the benefits of this, but do you have what it takes to become an entrepreneur? See, many people have a skill, and a skill says that you're good at what you do. But just because you have a skill don't mean you're going to be good at running a business. Hopefully you will be. A successful business owner is good at running an enterprise that uses your skill or others. The difference is running an enterprise. Do you have what it takes? Again, an entrepreneur, he needs to be a self-starter. She needs to be a self-starter. Nobody's going to wake you up in the morning and say you need to, to market. Nobody's going to wake up in the morning and say you need to make sales. Nobody's going to wake up with you in the morning and say you need to update the website or update social media. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to tell you you need to get out the house and go find clients. You need to be a self-starter. An entrepreneur has or needs to develop leadership skill. Again, it takes initiative. Leadership can be learned, and it can be learned over time. But if you're going to be a and if you're going to be a successful business owner, you should learn how to lead. A good place to learn how to lead is lead in, in your workplace. Learn how to lead in your church. Uh, accept a, a, a volunteer um, a situation where you're leading others and begin to learn. Leadership is something that can be learned. It's an acquired skill. It's also an art form, but hey, you can learn to be a good leader. Even if you're quiet, you can also learn to be a good leader. Uh, an entrepreneur needs to be patient because all of us want to get there tomorrow. We want to be there. I mean, we want to be there yesterday. Um, sometimes it takes longer to achieve the dream than you like, and an entrepreneur needs to have the patience to wait it out. An entrepreneur needs to have some sort of tenacity. Uh, an entrepreneur needs to stay in there, keep on doing what they know is right to do, even when it seems like we're not getting the results we want. See, many businesses fail, but an entrepreneur who wants to start a business needs to have tenacity. Let's talk about some of the traits of a successful business. And I know we're coming close uh, to the end of our hour here. But uh, before we set ourselves up for next week, let's talk about some of the things that make for a successful business. Here are some of the attributes right now. They need marketing. When you start your business, you need to have all of these different facets of your company working. Okay? So you need to market. You need to tell people what you're all about. If the word never gets out, how can you make any sales? You need to work on your marketing. You need to have finances. Many businesses fail because they don't have enough finances to last. The pipe. Don't rest on your laurels. That's so easy <clears throat> for a business owner to do. You can become very successful and sit down and say, oh yeah, I can just put on my thumbs or I just spend all my time in Paris or spend all my time in Hawaii. You need to spend some time researching and developing new products. Otherwise, competitors will come and take your clients away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Attributes of a successful business regulation. Many small businesses don't think about this. 
you get into payroll, man, you better you better pay your payroll taxes like you're supposed to. Uh, you know, sometimes there are local re uh, regulations, not just federal and state. You need to make sure all that's in, in order. Otherwise, they'll come and shut you down. <clears throat> so you need to be aware of all the regulations uh, that may affect your business labor. You need to make sure you keep your employees happy. It's easier to keep an employee than, than find another good one. Uh, here are some of the specific and the identifiable reasons that some uh, businesses uh, succeed. Number one, having a product or service is well suited to the needs and requirements of the current market. Now, we're in COVID-19. <clears throat> and a lot of people say, oh, this is a terrible time to uh, start a business. This is a wonderful time to start a small business. There's no better time to start because things are changing. The companies that are keeping up with uh, uh, the current market, that's an opening for you. In fact, online businesses right now are really booming. Any business where the product or service are exchanged on the Internet is really booming. Here's some examples. Search engine optimization. Since a lot of people are going to websites, buying from websites, they've been in, we've been at home for the last three months. Man, online sales have been booming. Uh, even if you know you had a uh, you know your fitness guru, you could be teaching a fitness class through Zoom and charge for it. Or you can have some baking classes through Zoom. Or use something free like Facebook Live to, to teach what you have to offer. Right now, even though COVID-19 has caused customers, now we're starting to get out again, but has caused customers not to go out to home and go into stores, you just have to be agile. And those companies that are agile are doing well during this period of time. Home improvement is booming. If you're going to Home Depot, you're going to Lowe's, those guys are making money because people are home, and since they're home, they're looking at all the things that need to be improved. So if you can offer something for home improvement, that helps right now. Just an example of being agile and keeping current with the market. Number two, you need to establish a complete business plan before commencing business operations. I highly, highly recommend you put your business plan together. When I first formed my, when I formed my first full-time IT business, I spent a whole year putting my business plan together. The business plan is going to look at marketing. It's going to be looking at competition. It's going to be looking at finance. It's going to be looking at budgeting. It's going to be looking at long term, where we're going to be one year, two years, five years from now. You need to project out. A business plan is very important. So even before commencing business operations, you may look at your business plan going out. I highly recommend that. Conducting a complete market analysis, and that market analysis will become a part of your, your business plan. Thoroughly developing advertising. You need to look at that because if customers don't know you're there, they can't buy your product or service. Again, I'm making this available to you as a download, so I'm going through this relatively quickly. Establishing tight financial controls is very important, budgeting, because you don't know where you are financially. Let me say this. You can't handle your own checkbook, your own personal finances. You might consider getting somebody else to handle your business finances, because it's pretty important. A good skill to have is to manage your own personal finances. If you can stay above and do well with your own personal finances, you can also do well with the business finances. And this is critical if you're going to be successful in business to manage your own finances and to manage it separately from your personal finances. In fact, there's some nice tools online that you can use. Some you pay for and some are absolutely free for managing your, your business. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, ensuring there's a high degree of confidence with your staff. You start getting to the point where you your business is growing beyond yourself, you need to have staff. You need to be able to hire the right people with the competence and the capability and the integrity to help you get where you're going. You know, one of the keys is, and some of the successful business owners, they have learned how to find the right people to get on the bus to help them to achieve their dream. You can't achieve it all by yourself. So you need to get the right people on the bus with you to help you reach your goals. Now, just the opposite of that, we're coming to a close here. Why do businesses fail? Let's face it, 
that more businesses that fail than succeed, and why do they fail? I want to tell you these so you can avoid these. Number one, lack of direction. Have your business plan before you even start business operations so you know where you're going. At least you got a direction of where you're going. Yes, it will change over time because there are some things going to uh, come up that you didn't think about, didn't know about, or the competition changed, or the atmosphere, marketing atmosphere changed, but at least you got some direction to go in. And patience, you've got to plan for the long haul. And sometimes it takes longer to get there than you anticipate. You need to be patient. Don't let greed get in the way. Some people are so interested in making a buck for themselves, they starve their company of cash. Your company, your business has to have enough cash to make it even through the low points or the low parts of the month until income is coming in. Don't let greed get in your way. Taking action without thinking through first. Think smart then make your decisions, or cost controls. We've talked about that. If you can't handle your finances, personal finances, get somebody else to manage your business finances for you. Poor product quality. Nobody's going to keep buying your product unless it's of good quality. Insufficient working capital goes back to the money you need for your money to be successful. Again, that's one of the key points that a business will need. A lot of times we think, you know, we just started this business. You need the money that's going to last you for the long haul, and that is having enough working capital. Bad or non-existent budgeting, we talked about that, inadequate financial records, or loss of momentum in the sales department. You've got to keep it going and keep your sales folks out there bringing in the revenue. Failure to anticipate market trends, that's a big one, because the market is changing all the time. That's why big stores, that's why the malls right now are not doing quite so well. We're at a point in time where the market has changed. and Your business needs to change with the trends. The lack of managerial ability or experience uh, and also indecisiveness. And Dan, a business owner needs to make good decisions and quick decisions having thought about them. Uh, bad human relations, you're not going to Keep good employees if you're not treating them well. Diffusion of effort. You need to be focused and not be all over the place. Okay? All right. So uh, let me close with this. It's okay to start your business uh, part-time. In fact, I highly re uh, recommend it. Start your business part-time, grow your business, and as it grows, then uh, be willing to jump out full-time. Okay. Any questions? What questions do you have, go ahead and put those in the chat window and I'll see if I can answer those quickly uh, for you. Okay? All right. Oh, no. Can you hear me okay? Great, 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 great. Wonderful, wonderful. Great, great, great. I'll check back over here again. Let me kind of close things out here again. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put it there. Now we can. Great, 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 great. All right. So let me go ahead and kind of close out. If you have any questions, put them over there. So what do we talk about tonight? You know, the best thing you can do after listening to something like this, don't just say, oh, that was interesting. The best thing you can do right now is apply what you have learned. What do we talk about tonight? Eagle and PPP. I will highly suggest you to go to sba.gov and see if you can steal apply for EDL and PPP, okay? That should be a step that everybody's going to take tonight. We talked about the benefits of starting an enterprise. Are the benefits big enough for you to actually start your business? Next week, come back next Wednesday, this time 7 p.m., and we will go through the process of actually starting your business, deciding which form it's going to take. Are you an entrepreneur? I want you to think about this. Am I an entrepreneur? Can I make decisions? Can I take a reasonable level of risk? We talk about those things which make for a successful business. Can I be a successful business owner? And then, of course, am I going to? Now that I know all this, am I going to legally start my business? If so, you need to come back here next week, 7 p.m. next Wednesday, and we will go through the process. Okay? Next week, start your own business. Again, you can pick up these notes right now at darylchoen.com slash start1.pdf. 
And everything I've talked about is in my book. You can go to Amazon.com, figure out how to start your own successful small business. All right? Or you can email me directly at ministry at DarylJordan.com. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. Any final words? Did you know anything about Peddler's License? I'm sorry. I don't know about Peddler's License. wish I could help you with that, but I don't. Sorry. As we mentioned, every small business is a little different. I was hoping uh, to give some general information tonight. Glad, finally, you enjoyed uh, this. Great. Good night, everybody.